Hey everybody, it's Anna and welcome back to my booktube channel. So I left a poll on my Instagram account because I wasn't sure which video I wanted to film next and the people asked for a library book haul. So here you have it. These are all of the books that I've checked out from the library uh, mostly over the past couple of weeks. It's kind of a combination of I went and got a little overzealous in selecting new titles and then a bunch of my library holds came in at once. So. I don't know if I'm gonna have time to finish all of these before it's time for them to go back to the library, but I'm gonna give it my best shot and just talk to you a little bit about each of the books that I picked up. So I'll go ahead and start with the Peak Picks, which are our library's like new books that you can check out with no wait, but for a shorter amount of time. The first one that I picked up was The Bird King, which is a historical novel by G. Willow Wilson that takes place at the end of the um, like Muslim rulership of the Iberian Peninsula. This follows two characters, Fatima and Hassan, uh, as they are kind of escaping from the Spanish Inquisition's arrival at their door as they've lived in the palace, the Alhambra, for their entire lives, and now they're off on a kind of unlikely quest to have to start a new life away from the Spanish Inquisition. I don't like this as much as I have enjoyed her other writing. It is very different in tone. It's a lot more um, contemplative and thoughtful so if you like that kind of thing, you might really enjoy this, but it was a little bit different from what I was expecting. We're about halfway through it right now, so we'll see what I end up thinking of it by the end. And then the second peak pick that I picked up, peak pick that I picked up, pop, 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 pop. <laughs> the second one that I picked up is The Bride Test by Helen Huang. This is a kind of follow-up or spin-off novel to her romance novel from last year, The Kiss Quotient, which I really, really enjoyed. If you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know romance isn't really a genre that I tend to gravitate towards. However, I really did like The Kiss Quotient a lot. Um, it was a own voices book with autistic representation. There's an autistic main character, and I believe that this book follows some of the side characters from the first book, so it was enough for me to want to pick it up. Next, we'll go ahead and get into some of the comics and graphic novels. So after watching Avengers Endgame recently, I decided it was finally time to start reading the two Hawkeye series that my friends have been recommending to me for forever. So I have Hawkeye My Life as a Weapon, and Hawkeye, Kate Bishop Hawkeye, ready to go. Haven't started those yet. I'm also continuing to read the Giant Days comic book series. I'm almost caught up with this. I don't know what I'm gonna do with my life when I am caught up because I've really been enjoying this so much. It's super delightful. It's a story of three girls that are all at a British university together and it follows them through their time as university students. It starts a little bit slow, but as you get to know the characters, it really begins to pick up steam. It gives me a similar feel to a good ensemble cast like Parks and Rec or Six of Crows or something like that. Really enjoying these. All right, here's another thing that friends have been telling me to read forever, the I Hate Fairyland series. I went ahead and requested the first two volumes of this book. Uh, I know pretty much what it's about. I just thought it was time for me to read it. Then I tried something a little bit different for me, which is The Wicked and the Divine. I have a really good friend that um, cosplays Persephone from The Wicked and the Divine. I'll go ahead and link her Instagram down below if you want to check that out. But I know that this series is finally coming to an end after, when was this first one published? 2014, so it's been like five years and the series is finally coming to an end. So I figured now would be a good time to pick it up because that way I can read all of it without running out of books. I also picked up the graphic novel adaptation of The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle. I read the novel uh, of this book last month, I think, and I'm obsessed. Like seriously, it's one of the best things I've ever read in my life. Go read it if you haven't, if you care about fantasy, good storytelling. It's incredible. And this is also written by the author of the novel, uh, so I am very excited to pick that up. And then this is one that my husband actually recommended to me that I then forgot that he recommended and I picked up and then he went, oh, you're reading my recommendation. So like unintentional recommendation. But that is The Gigantic Beard That Was Evil by Stephen Collins. I don't know anything about this except that it just looks really funny and awesome and it was recommended highly. So that was enough for me. 
All right, I do have some nonfiction books next. A bunch of these I went through and uh, requested all of the ones that were nominated for Lambda Literary Awards, which is a book award that goes to various LGBT books every year. And then some of these were just, you know, other interesting things. So at first, for the queer nonfiction, we have Pray the Gay Away, The Extraordinary Lives of Bible Belt Gays by Bernadette Barton. No Place Like Home, Lessons in Activism from LGBT Kansas by C.J. Genevieve. Memoir of a Basque Lieutenant Nun Transvestite in the New World by Catalina de Arauso, translated from Spanish by Michelle Steptoe and Gabrielle Steptoe. This is um, a like self-written autobiography kind of thing, and I'm really interested in like queer people's autobiographies. This is a memoir called Yes, You Are Trans Enough by Mia Violet. And now for some of the non-queer non-fiction. This one is called We Are the Nerds, The Birth and Tumultuous Life of Reddit to the Internet's Cultural Culture Laboratory by Christine Legorio Chafkin. Um, I have kind of a tumultuous relationship with Reddit. I've been a user on and off for the past like five years or so, but I read Reset by Ellen Powell, who's one of the like former CEOs of Reddit, and I really enjoyed that, so I thought maybe I would like this too. Let Her Fly, A Father's Journey by Ziaudin Yousafzai, who is the father of Malala Yousafzai. You probably know about her. And then finally, con men and cut purses, scenes from the Hogarthian underworld, because you can take the girl out of grad school, but you can't take the love for the weird 18th century shit out of the girl. All right, and then this final category I have here is my fiction category. I think most of these, actually all of these are YA. They're either new releases or queer YA that I've been recommended by friends or just things that I thought were interesting that I picked up. So this book is called I Am Jay by Chris Beam. I know that this is a novel about a transgender teenager, and this was recommended to me by Kathy during the Pride-a-thon. I have White Rose by Kip Wilson, which is a historical novel about Sophie Scholl, who was a student that resisted the Nazis in the final days of World War II and was executed for it. Then I have The Navigator's Touch by Julia Ember. This is a follow-up to her queer fairy tale retelling of The Little Mermaid, which was called The Seafarer's Kiss. I know that The Seafarer's Kiss did have some kind of like problematic elements to it, but I did want to see what the follow-up did and, you know, see if there was anything else that I could get out of the story. Then we have another recommendation from Kathy, which is The Princess and the Fangirl, A Geekerella Fairy Tale by Ashley Poston. I just recently finished reading Geekerella, and it was just super sweet and delightful and fluffy, and it was a great, like, fandom novel. Most of the plot centers around this cosplay competition that's coming up at a kind of Star trek e type convention, and I know that this is a spinoff that I believe includes some of the side characters from the original. And then these last two books I picked up actually because I went to another author event. I went to a book signing for Jay Kristoff, who is the author of the Nevernight Chronicles and um, the Illumini books, I think. I haven't read those yet, but I've seen them all over booktube, so you might know him from that. And when he was asked in the like author Q&A part of the part of the discussion, what authors he really admired and appreciated and enjoyed reading. He said that Lainey Taylor was his favorite living author. I've never read anything by Lainey Taylor, so I went to the library to just pick up some of her books, and I came away with Daughter of Smoke and Bone and Strange the Dreamer, both of which I believe are the first in a series, each their own series, I guess I should say. But anyway, Jay Kristoff, whom I love, said that Lainey Taylor is doing things that no other writer living is doing currently, and so I couldn't help but be intrigued by that. All right, I think that is most, if not all, of the library books that I have picked up recently. This cost me a sum total of zero dollars to make, and maybe about 20 minutes walking to and from my public library branch, which is not that far away from where I live. 
I'm actually really curious uh, how many of you are like regular library users and do you like seeing library halls? I know some of the allure of like the book haul is that you get to, you know, see the shiny new hardcovers and stuff like that. But let's be honest, if I were to purchase all of the shiny new hardcovers, I would quickly bankrupt myself. And while books might make a house, they don't make a very good home when you live in a place world famous for its rain. So yeah, let me know if you've read any of these books, what you think of them, if you want to make the case for me to bump one of them up top to the TBR next. I think that now that this video is uh, filmed and done and hopefully getting posted this weekend, by the time you're watching it, it should be the weekend, um, I will be able to film another reading wrap up kind of thing to follow it up. All right, so I think that's gonna do it. Thank you all very, very much for watching. Um, if you're new here and you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you did so. I am currently on a quest to 300 subscribers, which I would like to get by the end of the year. That would be awesome. Uh, am I forgetting anything? I don't think so. So as always, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.